This is Peter Zoller. The Innsbruck native works at the Institute for Quantum Optics and Quantum Information, part of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. He is also professor of theoretical physics at the University of Innsbruck. He is a scientific leader in quantum physics and a pioneer in quantum computing research. He has received many highly prestigious international awards and he is a frequent guest lecturer at top research centers around the world. Already in the mid-1990s, he and his colleague Ignacio Sirac proposed a concept to build a quantum computer. And in recent years, many aspects of the quantum computer have been implemented. The approach is based on the interaction between laser light and cold atoms. Initially, it was just a vision. So what is uh, reality right now in the lab here, in particular also here in Innsbruck, you know, was sort of a dream and a vision and maybe even some theoretical fiction, I would say uh, 15 or maybe 20 years ago. And I think that I'm in retrospect somehow very proud of what was achieved. It was an achievement sort of that was based on these uh, theoretical ideas, but also in combination, of course, with the experimental progress that was made that, uh, you know, from these original ideas that we have something that works now in the lab, which is a small quantum computer. It behaves like a kind of a baby quantum computer. It is a first step, but nonetheless, it is a quantum computer that when it grows up, you know, will eventually be able to do what, uh, compute, what the quantum computers are supposed to do. At over 60 years of age, Zoller's curiosity is as strong as ever, and he keeps venturing into other fields of physics. For example, he has linked quantum physics with solid-state physics, and recently also particle physics. This has resulted in proposals for concepts to realize quantum simulators, which are to tackle problems that have yet to be solved. For example, they may lead to a better understanding of the Big Bang. The quantum computer is sort of the Mount Everest of all of these quantum physics. You know, it's the highest mountain to be climbed and maybe also the most difficult mountain to be climbed. But there's many other mountains that are maybe equally uh, beautiful, a little bit, you know, easier to climb. And so it's very similar here also in the context of quantum physics that uh, maybe we should not only focus on building a quantum computer, but also something like, say, a quantum simulator, um, which is a special purpose quantum computer. And again, on the Innsbruck side, I have to say that we are very proud that we came up with ideas that, for example, provide quantum simulators in the context of solid state physics. Uh, there the idea is that uh, it is very difficult to simulate uh, certain quantum materials uh, like high DC superconductivity and so on. And then the question is, you know, can we build a quantum simulator to mimic, uh, you know, the behavior of such very complicated quantum antibody systems? And um, as I said, yeah, we had ideas uh, related to atoms in, in, say, optical lattices, you know, very cold atoms that are stored in, in light fields uh, that essentially uh, built a quantum simulator. And uh, today we are rather proud that, again, you know, there's many labs out there in the world that have realized these ideas and uh, progress, and uh, again, is somehow enormous. Today, the technologies that scientists have at their disposal are a lot more sophisticated than in the 1990s. Experimental physicists, for example, Zoller's colleague, Rainer Blatt, are now able to create prototypes based on the ideas and concepts of the theorists. Zoller is convinced that quantum physics will soon be part of our everyday life. So we had what we call the first quantum revolution and now we're in the middle of what we call the second quantum revolution, where we understand that quantum physics is very weird and we are trying to use this weirdness of quantum physics now to do things like, say, a quantum computer or maybe then also quantum communication and to talk about the practicalities uh, in the context of quantum communication, for example, uh, the promise is that you know, if you make uh, communication, say, with your bank, you would be secure. And the security is uh, you know, you know, given by the facts of that we have certain physical laws and not you know, the difficulty that the classical computer is not able to crack a certain code. So in this sense, uh, I would say that there's a long you know, uh, kind of a span from you know, simple applications like quantum communication as secure communication then all the way to the quantum computer, which is sort of the high end of all of these things. The first quantum revolution led to the production of transistors, lasers and other technologies now common in our everyday life. 
Solar thinks that the current second quantum revolution will affect all of us in just a few decades.